ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣಪತಿ ಶಾರದ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾನಂದಂ ಪರಮ ಸುಖದಂ ಕೇವಲಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಮೂರ್ತಿ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತ ಗಗನ ಸದೃಶ ತತ್ವಮಸ್ಯಾದಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಏಕ ನಿತ್ಯ ವಿಮಲಮಚಲ ಸರ್ವಧಿ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಭೂತ ಭಾವಾತೀತ ತ್ರಿಗುಣರಹಿತ ಸದ್ಗುರು ತಂ ನಮಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ಆನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಚರಿತ್ರ ಟು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಟೂ originally shri guru charitra was started as a conversation discussion between namadharaka and shri siddha while namadharaka on his way to ganagapura met shri siddha and kept on asking question regarding the greatness of the guru and shri siddha a disciple of shri guru himself explained this guru charitra in fact the four fathers of namadharaka it served shri guru because of which namadharaka was invited to the ganagapura by the shri guru now in this story namadharaka asked to shri siddha how did my forefathers serve shri guru shri siddha explained to him your grandfather's father sayam deva had worshiped shri guru at Osar Gram Shri Guru had affection for him Shri Guru later came and stayed at Ganagapura his fame spread all over the country knowing this Sayam Deva also came to Ganagapura he came to the mat and bowed to Shri Guru and prayed him Shri Guru was pleased he placed his palm on his head and blessed him and said you will be my devotee for generations shri guru asked him to bath at the sangama return for the meals to the matha after returning from the sangama sayam deva worshiped shri guru with 16 upacharas shodashopachara and offered several delicious articles of food as naivedya he dined with shri guru who was who inquired about his family sayam deva said my relatives and sons are living at uttara kanchi that is ganganchi hail and healthy gadaganchi hail and healthy i wish to stay with you and serve your holy self now shri guru said my service is difficult I live in a town for some time while in the forest at other time it is troublesome to live in a forest if your mind is firm then only you should stay here sayam deva conceded and said a devotee of shri guru has no fear 3 months passed one evening shri guru went to the sangama along with sayam deva alone and sat below the ashwatha tree there was a great storm followed by heavy rain sayam deva stood stretching a cloth over shri guru to protect him from the rain there was a shivering cold in the night so shri guru asked sayam deva to go to the matha in the town and bring fire thick darkness and spread all over and there was lightning now and then shri guru warned sayam deva not to look to his right or left side any time while going to the matha anyhow sayam deva reached the matha took fire and returned but out of curiosity he looked to his right side and saw a cobra going along with him he was frightened he then looked to the left side there too he saw another cobra he recited shri guru's name and walked straight he came to shri guru and lit the fire the two cobras came before shri guru bowed to him and went away shri guru said to sayam deva why are you so much afraid i had sent these cobras to protect you i shall tell you a tale about service to shri guru to pass this night 
when Sri Guru was sitting on a peak of the Kailasa Mount, when Sri Shiva was sitting on a peak of the Kailasa Mountain with Parvati, she asked him, how can Sri Guru be served with, a, with devotion? Sri Shiva, Shiva said, one who serves Sri Guru with sincerity can attain all that one desires. Brahma had an incarnation which was called Trastvastra Brahma. He had a handsome son. When his threat ceremony was performed, his father sent the boy to, the, to a guru for study of Vedas and Shastras. He served the guru devotedly. Once there was rain and the water came in the ashram of the guru, the guru told pupil to construct a lasting house with all conveniences, which should look always new. At the same time, the wife of the guru asked the boy to bring her a blouse, which should neither be sewn nor woven. The son of the guru said, Bring sandals for me, that would enable me to walk on waters and take me to any desired place. And at the same time, the daughter of the guru asked the boy, Bring earrings for me and a playhouse of an elephant tooth having one pillar and all the conveniences. Also bring parts in which food will be warm and which will not be black due to suit. Pupil took leave of Guru and went to a forest. He was anxious how all these things could be obtained. On the, day, on the way, he met an ascetic who inquired, Child, why are you so worried? Brahmachari boy bowed to him and said, Kindly guide and protect me. It is my good fortune that I could see you in this forest. He told him that his guru, guru's wife, son and daughter of the guru, had asked him what they asked him to do. He said, I am anxious as to how all these things can be achieved. The ascetic assured him and said, Don't worry. Kaushi is a holy place of Vishweshwara. You go there and worship him. All your desires will be fulfilled. Kaushi is known as Ananda Kanana. One attains all the four Purusharthas after going there. The Brahmachari asked, Where is Kaushi? How can I go there? Ascetic said, I shall take you there. Due to you, I shall also have the fortune to see the holy place again. Saying so, both went to Kashi instantly by yogic power. The ascetic then told the Brahmachari to do Antar Graha Yatra, Dakshina Manasa Yatra, and Uttara Manasa Yatra. While visiting the holy places, both should be taken there. Then do Unchak Kroshi Yatra, Shukla and Dark Fortnight Yatras, that is Shukla and Krishna Paksha Yatras, should also be performed. Worship nine Lingas and Kashi Vishweshwara. If your devotion to Guru is firm, Sri Shiva Shankara will be pleased and fulfill all your desires. Saying this, the ascetic went away. Brahmachari performed all the yatras as instructed by the ascetic. Sri Shankara was pleased. He appeared before the boy and asked him to have a boon. Tvastra Kumara narrated his account and mentioned the articles required for Guru, Guru's wife, son and daughter of Guru. Sri Shankara blessed him saying, you will be as efficient as Vishwakarma. The Brahmachari prepared all the articles skillfully 
and returned to the Guru's place. The Guru was also pleased to see him back with success. He also blessed him, saying, You will be proficient in all vidyas. Shri Guru explained the greatness of Guru to Sayam Deva in this way. By this, by this time, the sun was rising on the eastern horizon. Sayam Deva said, you explain Kashi Yatra in details. While hearing the same, I could see and also visit the respective holy shrines, tanks, and places with your holy self and thought as if we were in Kashi. He then prayed Guru with eight shlokas, which are daily chanted after Arati at Ganagapura till now. While praying, his throat choked and his hair stood erect on his body. Sri Guru was much pleased. He blessed him and said, Bring your family and children here and stay with me. Do not bow to Muslims hereafter. Because Sayam Deva at that time was serving a Muslim king and he was not happy for serving a king for his personal needs, he, he wanted to leave that job and come and serve Sri Guru. And hence, Sri Guru told told him, "You need not have to bow to your Raja, your Sultana hereafter." Sayam Deva went to his place and returned to Ganagapura with his family and children on Bhadrapada Shuddha, fourteenth, the Ananta Chaturdashi day. This time he prayed Shri Guru with eight slokas in Kannada. Shri Guru seated him by his side and inquired about all. Sayam Deva had two sons. Shri Guru loved elder Naganatha. Shri Guru placed his palm on the head of Sayam Deva and said, You do not serve the Muslim kings here afterwards. You all have bought at Sangama. Sayam Deva and his family bathed at the Sangama, worshipped the Ashwatha there, and returned to the Matha. Sri Guru said to Sayam Deva, Today is Ananta Chaturdashi. All Brahmins worship Ananta on this day. You too should do Ananta Puja. Sayam Deva said, You are my Ananta. Still, Guru insisted on him to do the Ananta Puja. Thus ended Chapter 42 of Sri Guru Charitra. Namaste Sharade Devi, Kashmira Puravasini, Tvamaham Prarthaye Nityam, Vidyadanancha Dehime. Goodbye.